no, no, no. There, there are, there is a lot of, 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 of. There is law. There is law at some level, and most of the laws are emerging laws. If you said everything that can happen is compulsory, and you identify what is logically impossible, out of that you get something that looks like a law. Okay, a super complex law. Quantum theory is, is exactly that. It's a very convoluted set of rules coming from the fact that at certain level, everything that can happen actually happen. Is it cubism? No, uh, that's, that's, I mean, you've been, you've been trying to answer the question, what is quantum theory, okay? What is? I'm trying to answer why quantum theory works. It is what eventually will support cubism. Ah. Science isn't worth doing if you can't get emotionally charged about it. That's funny because so much of science is taking a dispassionate view of your data and... and Do you believe that? I believe it's important at some point. Do you believe you achieve it? If you know what you're going to get before you get it, that's a biased experiment. Mm -hmm. What the hell are we talking about when we're talking about quantum mechanics? Uh -huh. It's very difficult and actually almost impossible to um, make proper sense of the concept of objective probability classically. So people always think that in quantum mechanics it's different. In quantum mechanics you have this concept of objective probability because they derive from quantum states. And cubism denies this by um, insisting that even in quantum mechanics, every probability is always personal belief of the agent who assigns it. And therefore randomness, well, in some sense, is always in the eye of the beholder. Randomness invokes for me the idea of fixed objective probabilities. Most people think of a random event, let's say something that has two outcomes, a random current toss as something where it's really, in some objective way, equally likely for heads or tails to, to come about. And the very idea of an objective probability, of course, is anathema to the cubism. So we've, we've made progress in making the equations of quantum mechanics look more like they're genuinely about probabilities. I'm trying to answer a different question that eventually will support your... Or not. Or not. Mm. Mm. There's rolling a die, okay, well, if you knew all the initial conditions of the die and the, with which way the wind was blowing, you will know what the outcome of that die is. It's just a complicated classical mechanical system. But we're comfortable enough with quantum mechanics having some inherent randomness to say, if I'm going to get a random thing that's truly random, I can trust quantum mechanics to provide it for me. And eventually you have the standard model. The standard model is, is a list of bricks. List of bricks. Bricks, yes. You always have quantum theory in all physical theories we use except general relativity. Mm. Okay? And that's that's the scientific mystery. And in particular in regard to there were some waiters here. To give us, holy shit, I am tired of defending cubism. It's turned into my whole life. Well, and where 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 are you when I'm always doing this? <laughs> Just doing my job at home. I mean, it's particularly annoying, the, uh, and I really don't quite know what to do about it. Now we come along and say, wave functions are the probabilities in quantum theory are personal to the agent using quantum theory. So they hear that, but then they haven't given up the previous idea that quantum theory is about the world. And so they try to put the two together, and they say quantum theory is about the world, yet quantum theory is only about my beliefs, so it must be that the whole world is that poor guy's beliefs when they don't realize that for us, the world comes first. That the world exists is established just by our being here and by our having this conversation, for instance. I always felt that cubism in this, this particular way, this, this participatory uh, aspect of it, the idea that by your actions you change the world and things come into existence by your actions, a far more natural way of thinking about for instance, interaction with other people, but also everything else. You know, William James had an essay titled, is, is Life Worth Living? At times in his youth, he felt suicidal. And um, he was saved by reading the right book about free will. So for James, 
Having the ability to change the world, which was his notion of free will, made life worth living. And I guess sometimes when, I feel, when I'm feeling grandiose about this thing that we've worked on for the last 20 years, Cubism, I think that it says that there's something about our most fundamental physical theory that actually indicates life is worth living.